Hey special family, welcome back to part two of the war between parents of children with autism and autistic adults. Most of us that are on TikTok aren't here to help parents. We're here because we've been feeling alone, especially females on the spectrum, because I never, ever have met another female on the spectrum except for when I joined TikTok. Never met one in person. Uh, and also, as an early diagnosis, I've never met another early diagnosed female. Uh, so parents will find my content helpful as I tell my story because they'll be able to parallel it with their child's story. Um, and I've also helped parents when they ask questions, but I'm not mind readers. So most of us are here for ourselves and building our own community. And then we get put this pressure from the autism community to help parents. And we want to help parents because we were once those kids. And when I say that, I don't mean identically that kid, but feeling lost, not knowing where to turn, having parents that don't know where to turn. So we want to. But then we also get abused by these parents as they find out that uh, not everything we post will identically help them or help exactly what they're talking about. Because we are individuals with different experience. As a community, if you keep watching a couple of us or following quite a few of us, you could probably piece it together because as a parent, you have to instinctually go by, you are the expert on your child and you know which will work and which won't. Uh, so just kind of listening to all our stories, thanking us for our time for being vulnerable because like for me to come back uh, into the autism community after I was diagnosed at three and then I was able to mask so well that I had hid my autism for quite a while and then to be public about it just to face discriminations of not getting jobs you know stuff like that because people automatically judge us uh has been extremely hard um so just like realizing that for us and realizing maybe having some passion uh compassion for us because most of the time when we talk we talk out of passion we seem very blunt and forthcoming uh but we're very passionate when it comes to our community and helping others and all this, because depression is very prevalent. It's nine times higher in people with autism. Uh, and just not wanting that for other people's children is pretty much where you see that passion that we do have. But saying we don't help just by telling our story is terrible. And if you have a question, just ask. And we'll answer it. But we're not here for you to watch us and be a show pony. And then when we don't help, just block us and be like, hey, you you don't help. I only followed you because I wanted help. Like, don't use us. We've been used our entire lives. I thought I was irritated when I saw your video, but then I went through your page and it just got worse. So let's recap for the people who don't want to take the time to go through, because I wouldn't blame them. It was a lot of shit to wade through. Um, what I stitched is a video of you sharing a meltdown of your autistic child while you do absolutely nothing, and then post it saying that this is meant for educational purposes. That's all fine and well, except I'm like... 99.73% sure that you don't have permission from your child to share these. I'm 99.73% sure that you didn't ask his permission. And that's pretty that, that's pretty icky on the on the face level because you are sharing incredibly hard moments for him for the world to see under the guise of education as if your child, your son is some sort of learning specimen. Like he's a science experiment for us to document and analyze. He's not some passage in a textbook. He's not a frog on the dissection table. That is your living, breathing human child who has thoughts, feelings, and emotions, who has autonomy and deserves respect, which you are not showing him by posting these. 
Additionally, the Autism Speaks hashtag, do you understand what Autism Speaks is? First and foremost, eugenics. Like, without a doubt, Autism Speaks is a hate group against autistics, disguised as a charity to help us. The way they portray autism and make it this big, bad, scary thing. It's coming to take your children away. It'll destroy your family. And then focuses on all the bad aspects of autism, which are just the results of autistics being forced to conform to a neurotypical society. Being forced to suppress things like our stems. To force us to maintain eye contact, even though that's not necessary for communication. Forcing nonverbal autistics to speak when there are alternate methods of communication that achieve the same point. And they also support ABA therapy, which is directly linked to trauma in autistics. You can find cases on how it leads to PTSD in autistics. Because the point of ABA is to force us to conform. It's to take away these traits that are central to our autism. And to suppress them. Because it makes other people uncomfortable. Now, after going through the rest of your profile, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you employ these same things. You've already shown that you don't respect your son's autonomy. And when meltdowns like these are happening this frequently, it's typically a result of something in their environment, which you've created. Meltdowns are typically responsive over stimulation, whether it be emotionally, physically, auditorily, etc. So somewhere, you're fucking up to cause this incredible stress on your child. And these meltdowns are happening because you're not giving them the tools to cope with these feelings of overstimulation and how to regulate them. And then you record it. And if it's for medical purposes, you know, whatever. But then you post it on fucking TikTok. And then I looked back through your page and you're using your son to get fucking donations. Like he's a prop. His little puppy dog you hold up in commercials to try to get people to sympathy donate. And this is why I can't stand autistic mommies and autistic daddies. Because you're fucking parasites. You don't care about your kid. You care about the inconvenience to you. So here's an article that was written on today.com and they wrote an article on why there's a war between parents of children with autism and autistic adults. So let's go through the article and see if we can find the reason behind this unnecessary war because I don't even know why there's a war because if you ask me, we're on the same team. So I don't, l let's get into it. So as moms and dads try to find community online, autistic teens and adults are watching and weighing in. Okay. So this article was written by Laura T. Kofi and it's on today.com. So the article starts off with when Eileen Lamb's toddler son, Charlie, was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, she didn't have a big support network nearby. So like many other isolated and overwhelmed moms, she turned to social media. I was just looking for people that I could relate with. Lamb, 31 of Austin, Texas, told today's parents. She said her decision to share her family's autism journey on Facebook and Instagram turned out to be a double-edged sword. Hmm, I wonder why. Every time I posted something about Charlie, hundreds of people with autism would attack me and say, you clearly hate your child. We need to call Child Protective Services on you. You're a piece of S. You're not autistic, so you cannot speak about your son. It was very, very intense. It was horrible. I think that's where the problem lies, right there. People feel... People with autism feel like because we're not autistic, we can't speak for our child with autism. No two kids with autism are the same. The fact that you can write and speak gives you an upper hand of the parents that usually speak for their child. Because our kids are on the severe autistic side. They can't speak. And then you'll say, they, oh, you're not their voice. They have their own voice. But if I leave it up to my son's voice, he wants Oreo for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The only time he wants to take a bath is if he can flood my bathroom and flood the house or burn it down. Yeah. And run away, run into the highway, the streets. That's his voice. And as his parent, I know what's best for him. So his voice can be, I want to eat this, this, and that. I don't want to do this chore or I don't want to play that game. I want to do this. But his voice can't be, I want to flood your bathroom. I'm the parent. It's not going to happen. I'm going to be his voice. If it's something that's not beneficial or safe, I will be his voice. 
nobody autistic or not can tell me not to be my son's voice when I see that he's about to do something that will harm him in that in in that time second whatever you want to call it my parental instinct kicks in and I become his voice so you need to look at it from that side we are on the same team the only thing is you can talk and you can tell us how you feel which is easier but our kids that are on the lower side of the spectrum they can't tell us and they're not afraid they don't have the knowledge of what fear is it's not like they don't have the knowledge they just don't fear anything whether it's dangerous or not there's no such thing as fear on their mind and as the parent we become their voice and you need to understand that if you don't have a child with autism you can't tell us how to be a parent to that child with autism that's the part i think we kind of go left and right on but let's continue Lem thought the vitriol might subside when she opened up on social media about her own autism diagnosis, which she received a year or so after Charlie's. It actually got worse, Lem recalled. People told me that I had self-internalized ableism, that I was self-hating. I felt like I was being bullied, in, bullied into silence. I agree with her. On TikTok, it's like a whole frenzy. You can't say nothing or somebody with autism will come up and be like, oh, you're you're an ableist, you're an ableist. So you're kind of bullied. You can't say nothing about autism because you don't have it. Even though you live with a child with severe autism who knocks you on a regular basis, blue eyes, scratches, bite marks, choke holds. No, you don't know nothing about autism, so you can't speak. Only they could speak. Because, oh, wait, they don't have a child with autism. Oh, they never had a chokehold. Wait, no, maybe it's, oh, no, they never had a child flood their house or put it on fire. Wait, then what is it? Oh, they have autism in common. There's a difference. There's a difference. You can actually sit here and make a video. My child can't. So your autism and his autism, no two people with autism are the same. So you can't say it's the same. So therefore, we can't treat you the same. That's just my point. Let's continue. In the age of social media, parents everywhere grapple with issues of sharing and potentially oversharing information about their kids. For parents whose children have been diagnosed with autism, ADHD, and other neurological conditions, decisions about what to share online can be even more fraught. A post that one parent views as raising awareness or seeking acceptance could be father for future embarrassment and regrets when the child being posted about becomes an adult. Autistic teenagers and adults are on a crusade to help neurodiverse people get a fair shot in workplaces, academic institutions, and other settings. In recent years, autistic self-advocates have popularized the hashtag actually autistic and are pushing to rename Autism Awareness Month in April to Autism Acceptance Month. Many call out characteristics of autism on social media that they find offensive or misleading. There, there's this tragedy narrative out there implying that autism is a fate worse than death when it simply is not, said Amanda Siegler, 39, an autistic mom of autistic children who serves as an administrator of a Facebook group called Autism Inclusivity which has more than 70,000 members. There are too many martyr parents group out there. Groups where parents use their children for sympathy, Sigler continues. They say, oh, poor me, my child had a meltdown today. Really? They don't just come up out of the blue and say, poor me, my child had a meltdown today. See, that's the hip hypocrisy I don't like. Poor me, my child had a meltdown today and gave me a black eye at that part poor me my child had a meltdown today and burned down my house at that part poor me my child had a meltdown today and ran into the streets at that part poor me my child had a meltdown today and choked me no but why would we say that that would actually be poor them let's just say poor me my child had a meltdown how is that fair huh how is that fair 
Some parents of autistic children share posts that are excessive, excessively personal, including video footage of their kids having meltdowns, holding up signs describing the medication they're taking, and wearing diapers or sitting on toilets well after the age of 10. I'm not saying put your child out there, but some parents do go overboard i'll give you that some parents do go overboard and some parents shows the mel show meltdowns for educational purposes you can you can say it's not for educational purposes but who are you to tell the parent that it's not for educational purposes some people don't know what a meltdown looks like and if a parent doesn't show what the meltdown looks like they don't understand what's happening in their household They judge us from a standpoint when they have no clue what it is to have a child with severe autism. So in order for the parents to show a neurotypical person what a meltdown is and what it actually is to live with autism, not the autism where I could come on TikTok and make posts and talk bad about autism parents, where actually my kid can't speak for themselves, a tablet, they use a tablet to communicate, and if they don't get their way, it can turn into a fist fight. And if the parent, uh, and they try to harm themselves, if the parent doesn't show what that look like, how would some people know what autism meltdowns look like? So you can't tell a parent that posts a meltdown that is not for educational purposes if they wrote there it's for educational purposes. They wrote that there for a reason, it's for educational purposes. To show other people what it's like. But because you don't like it, then you feel like it's not for educational purposes. And I agree with you. Some parents do go too far. Some parents take advantage. You're right. And if they do, then yes, by all means, call them out on it. I'm not saying we're all perfect, but we're not all mean. We're not all bad parents. But you took all of us under one umbrella and said, Autism parents are, are, are terrible. Like, autism parents then bring you to the point where you can sit here and make videos about them. Hmm. Yeah. Call a spade a spade. Let's continue. Autistic adults tend to hate posts like these. They say that in addition to violation children's privacy, the posts do not reflect the experience of most autistic people. There you go again, most autistic people. You are not most autistic people. Because the parents that speak, speak for yourself. No two kids with autism are the same. The parents that speak out and show us, look, look, violating the children's privacy some parents do i'm gonna give you that some parents do violate the child's privacy privacy but your experience is not another person's experience no two people with autism are the same some experiences are horrific and you couldn't last 24 hours with them let alone 18 years 20 years 40 years the rest of their lives You wouldn't last with it without having a mental breakdown. So don't tell us what our experience is. Only we can tell you what our experience is, just like only you can tell us what your experience is. These parents are adults, so they should know better, Siegler said. Once a post is online, it's there forever. Camille Proctor, 55, a Michigan mom of 15-year-old autistic son, agreed. Proctor is the executive director and founder of the Color of Autism Foundation, a nonprofit organization that educates and supports black families with autistic children. Your child is going to grow up someday and see this, Proctor said, of sensitive online posts. I, I agree. If it's sensitive, don't post it. I agree with her. But if a parent posts something and says this is for educational purposes and maybe it's a child having a meltdown, Some people do not know, again, what a meltdown looks like. But if they post their child on the toilet naked, yeah, that's that's crap. Like, that's being, you're going too far. I, I, I give you that. And yes, people do need to know that it's going to be online forever. So certain things they, they need to not post. I get that part. But not all parents do that. But you cannot tell a parent that posts are in for educational purposes that it's not because you don't feel that way. It doesn't work like that because your experience is not their experience. 
Is it really unhealthy that you're letting them know they were a burden to you? A burden to you? It's funny. You see, there are three. There are three. When you get, your child get diagnosed with autism, they give you three levels. And I don't call my child a burden. But you, level one and level three are two different levels of autism. Let's not forget. And what level one does, level three can't do. The parent of level one does not go through abuse like the parents of level three. Let's just get that straight. Let's continue. The existence of such posts spotlight a painful reality. Autism is a spectrum, and parents of kids on the profoundly disabled end of the spectrum are often overwhelmed and terrified for their children's future. But according to you guys, we can't be. Because if we are, it's considered a burden because we're terrified of their future. Oh, you think they're a burden because we're terrified we'll glad a b get a black eye. Oh, you think they're a burden. What, because you didn't get a black eye? You don't get a chokehold? You not terrified? We're not the same. Some parents choose to vent their feelings in public forums and they can be vilified for it. Yeah, yes, they can. I feel very strongly that the complaints by mildly affected autistic adults that parents are violating their kids' privacy by writing about them represent the most insidious form of censorship, said Amy Lutz. Well, look at here. Let's take the keywords out of here, shall we? Violating their kids' privacy by writing about them. If I write that my child chokes me, am I violating his privacy? Or if I show you the chokehold, is that violating the privacy? And it's all about my kids' privacy. Did I give anybody consent to give me a blue eye? Did I give anybody consent to put me in a chokehold? Did I give anybody consent to bite me, hit me, kick me, scratch me? Or don't I have privacy? But I get it. Don't violate your child's privacy. But if a parent wants to write about it, maybe they didn't go into all the details, but they stayed on the service and wrote about it. They're allowed to. They're allowed to say, share their story because guess what? It's their story. That's just how I look at it. A Pennsylvania author, mom of a 22-year-old severely autistic son and vice president of the National Council on Severe Autism. Severely autistic individuals don't have the capacity to consent. Therefore, parents are forbidden to speak about them. Therefore, the only voice the public is supposed to hear is that of the autistic adults who claim to speak for the entire spectrum. I'm confused. So severely autistic individuals don't have the capacity to consent. Did I consent to get a blue eye? Did I consent for them to hit me, scratch me, or bite me? So therefore, parents are forbidden to speak about them. Who are you to forbid me to speak about my own child that I gave birth to? Like, you see how far this rabbit hole goes? Like, hmm. nothing about us without us. John Elder Robison is an autism expert who feels empathy for all the autism factions who spar on the internet. A best-selling author of memoirs about his own autism diagnosis at age 40 and a leader of neurodiversity initiatives for universities and U.S. government's committees. Robison is also the son of an autistic father and the father of a 31-year autistic son. In a recent Psychologic Today essay with the headline, Your Artistic Child is Perfect and May Need Help, Robinson addressed the autism wars being waged online. In the autism community, we often say, nothing about us without us. Meaning, any conversation about autistic people should be led by autistic people, Robinson wrote. It makes sense, but it's not the whole story in this case. There is another equally valid perspective. Nothing about us without us applies equally well to parenting. If the topic is parenting an autistic child, what better voices than autistic parents? Agreed. 
Robinson 64 of Western Massachusetts told today that the understand that he understands why many parents feel blindsided and are afraid when their children are diagnosed with autism. An expert shared by one in 54 children in the United States. Many parents see it as a terrible, terrifying disability, Robinson said. They wonder, will my child be able to live on their own when I'm gone? Can I not feel that? What, because I'm not autistic, I should not be thinking about that? Will they find a partner? Oh, you don't have autism, you can't speak for autism. If they'll find a partner, it's not up to you. You can't think about that. It's scary. These parents feel a lot of stress and a lot of fear. But when they write things online like, I wish I could cure my kid, autistic people who are very verbal online can take great offense. I can see why they're offended. Because you can't cure your kid. And that, because we're afraid, doesn't mean we don't love our kid. And that's the part where I feel like they go too far. Because I'm afraid of what will happen to my kid if I'm not around and I can't protect him, makes me a bad parent. If my kid hits me, strangles me, bites me, and I talk about it, it makes me a bad parent. You don't have his consent. Did I consent to this beating or am I just good to be a beaten stick? And make sure there's a roof over their head, food on the table, and get my beating on a regular and shut the hell up. Is that all I'm good for? Like, <laughs> they'll say, oh, you say you don't want people like me to be born. You don't want your son to be born. And no, those parents are not saying that at all. They're saying they think their son has a horrible disability and they wish he didn't. That's the whole point I'm trying to make with this whole thing that I'm doing a part one and a part two. And I, I, I haven't read this article before, but what this man says, this man summed it all up. This, there's two sides to the coin. I feel like autistic peop, individuals, teenagers, they can speak for autistic um, individuals and teenagers who can al- who are also on the same level as them. But you can't speak for severely autistic individuals where the caregivers are the number one person in their life making all the life decisions for them. Because we're the one who have to speak for them, think for them, do for them. Some of them are are still in diapers. My son is 10 years old and still wearing diapers. If I leave it up to him, because you can't speak for him, you are not his voice. He will smear it all over my house, my bed and everywhere. And I should, should just sit there because that's his voice. No, no, no. There's two sides to the coin. I can speak for my severely autistic child that's nonverbal, doesn't know what he's doing. I can speak for him. And we're not saying that we don't love our kid. We're not saying we wish we could cure our kid because we know we can't cure it. He is what he is. He's a human being. He's a child. We We see our kids beyond autism. We see the person he is. We know we can't cure it. We're not saying our son is a horrible disability. We just wish he didn't have that disability. That's it. If you feel that I said something that's wrong, think about it. You're not the parent of a severely autistic child. So you can't tell me how to be a parent of a severely autistic child. Just like I'm not an autistic teenager who can actually express their feelings and their wants and needs. So I can't speak for that autistic person or teenager who can express their feeling wants and needs. That'll be out of my lane. So we have to look at it like we're on the same line. We're on the same battlefield. The only thing is we both have lanes and you stay in your lane and we'll stay in ours, but you can't tell us that we can't be in our lane because you have autism, because you don't have a child with autism, severe autism, and you don't know what it is to be the parent of a severe autistic child. You don't know what it is to make sacrifices for that severe autistic child, that your whole household have to make those sacrifices to make sure that child is okay. So until you've walked a mile in that shoe, you can't tell us nothing. That's the point we get to. So if you, if you have any comments about it, Leave it in the comment section below and I'll catch you in the next video.